is where all the power starts, right here in the bottom end. Now we can start with a stock 302 block, which is what we have over here. And you know, in the late 60s, they built them pretty beefy. You could make a lot of power out of them. But you know, we hit that smog area in the 70s, and they started to strip a lot of material out to save some weight. And they weren't making a lot of power back then, so it wasn't a big deal. So somewhere around 400 horsepower, you can get pretty safely out of a stock 302 block. But above that, you're going to start blowing the bottoms in, the bottom end out, and some of the other areas. This is the Boss 302 block. In this case, it's been bored out from four inches to four and an eighth. It'll go a lot bigger than that on a big bore version. But this engine, we're going to try to keep uh, the high revving, you know, sort of big bore, smaller stroke. Now you can see right away the, the pan rails are nice and beefy. They tie in really well with the bulkheads. They're all filled in with a lot of structure. And we went from an old nodular iron two bolt cap to a four bolt, you know, billet cap, you know, with splayed bolts on the outside. So kind of cool. Now if we flip it over, we look at the deck face. I've got a cutaway here. Uh, and you can kind of see which is pretty neat. You know, on a race block like this, they've thickened the deck up because that's where your clamping load is between your cylinder head, your gasket, and your block. And you're trying to blow those two apart. And what's really cool is they've got these tiny little drill holes right between these cylinders because you've got coolant all the way around. But in between here, you've got heat from this side and you've got heat from this side with nowhere to go. So by cross drilling from one side all the way through, all the way through to the other side, you can see where these holes break out. It allows you to get cooling in there, keep the cylinders cool, keeps the gasket life, keeps from thermally growing in this area versus all the other areas. So a great way to have a dependable race engine. All right, let's look inside what goes into a race cylinder head. Now we all know it's about flow, so we want a good flowing intake port. Now this is a great flowing cast port on the Z head when you can get you know, cast or CNC. Well, we stepped it up on the CNC for our Z motor. Now let's look inside the combustion chamber because that's important too. Now all the Z heads come with a CNC combustion chamber. It's going to let you get consistency on volume because that's going to give you your compression ratio when the piston comes up and squeezes everything. You want it all to be uniform. Now let's take a look inside because this is kind of cool. So here's a cutaway section. Whew. Top side, bottom side. Now this is neat. You can see the intake port coming through here. Here's where your push rods are so you can see how wide this port's getting. And you can see your exhaust port here. And the key feature is to make sure you've got a nice thick combustion chamber tied really nice into your head bolt bosses. That's going to hold all that combustion you know, pressure. The other thing is your exhaust port seeing a lot of heat and your spark plug. So you want to make sure you've got good cooling all the way around that port. And you can see through the back side of the spark plug, I've got cooling all the way around to keep that cool. Now, flow on the intake side is important. And a lot of guys just look at that. But the exhaust flow is equally important. You've got to get that exhaust gas out or you're putting negative work into that push to get it to go out. So this head has a raised exhaust port. So this face, this exhaust port has moved up about three quarters of an inch and it's straightened out the flow so I don't have to make this hard 90 degree turn to get out, especially when I open that valve and get that first surge. So really cool cylinder head, a good race kind of head, good for street as well. But one thing we'll have to notice is moving that port, that moves our exhaust, it moves our headers. We've got some you know, power steering stuff going in, so we've got a new combination of parts. So you know, part of hot rodding, you change the recipe, you never know what you're going to get, but you're going to work your way through it. Welcome back. 67 Mustang. This car was originally going to be road race in vintage series, which meant he needed to use a vintage transmission, such as this top loader from Ford, built from the 60s to the 70s. It was a great piece, solid, but had its limitations. One being, it's got linkages in here that run the clutch, that get in the way of long tube headers, can also get in the way of power steering, and there's no five speed, there's no six speed. That's right, <laughs> it's missing something. So we're gonna do a serious upgrade today. This is the TKO 600, which means 600 foot pound capable. Uh huh. <laughs> but we've got more than just a transmission. We've got an entire kit here. This is all from Bruce at Modern Driveline because we're running a high RPM motor Peak power at 7,100 RPM, mm. so we need this thing to shift better. So he's upgraded for the 2-3 shift. We've also upgraded, these are your blocker rings. Now this surface right here, that's what's going to ride on the cone, uh, you know, on the, uh, the next gear you're going to select. And when you engage this, the surfaces actually take the two speed, you know, relative to each other and get them common. Now you can get your synchros to lock in and the next gear to lock in. Well, 
We've changed that by machining it and adding a carbon fiber ring that's going to you know, let us do a lot faster shifts at higher mm -hmm. RPM. Yep. Let's take them over to the pedal. Okay, now we're going to switch from you know, all that linkage. We're going to go hydraulic. Now, yeah. Hydraulic is great because it's got a great smooth nice. actuating yeah. uh, clutch feel. Mm -hmm. You don't have sloppy bushings in all the linkage <laughs> or stiction in a cable shifter. And you know what? It's a lot easier to rearrange a cable you know, or a hose than it is to figure out all the linkages it would take to do this. Yeah, now that's great. This kit comes from the clutch pedal. Uh, this is going to bolt to the firewall. So this is now your master cylinder for your hydraulics. You know, route your line over to a slave. Mm -hmm. Slave cylinder moves an old style. Moves your throw out bearing. Very simple, very easy. This bolts onto the front here, which is nice. And because it's on external, it allows you to not only adjust, but service the slave cylinder if necessary. Yeah, so we got a lot of goodies here, but I think it's time to start marrying them together, start putting them in the car, so ride along with us. our clutch going in, cleaning all off our surfaces. Now this is an outer limit design. So we've actually taken the friction material and bumped up the inside radius. It's really about the center point of the friction material where you get your location of, of grab. Well, the farther out from center to the outside, the more torque, just like on a torque wrench, you're going to be applied you know, from the engine down through the drive line. So it's going to improve how much basically clamp load or torque capability through the engine. Now this is kind of neat. This is the Marcel. So there's actually a spring surface between the two uh, friction surfaces. So as you're applying your clamp load, it actually softens and improves the drivability so it's not so harsh and grabby. It's pretty well. And these are Kevlar, uh, let's throw the pilot in there. These are Kevlar clutches. It's also going to improve uh, some of the drivability as well. And now that we've got our pilot in there, we can zip on our pressure plate, evenly distribute the bolts, mm -hmm. slowly clamp that guy down. Let's get our pins aligned. Okay. There we go. We've got our shift fork already in there. This guy is going to slide in. And we can choose to put the trans on now or after the engine's in the car, but. I don't know, we've got a lift and it's just as easy sometimes to just put them together. And that went pretty smooth. As you can see, we got a big stack of boxes from CJ Pony Parts. Got all of our front accessories. First thing we did was start with the main pulley on the bottom on the crank here on the harmonic balancer. And what you want to do is just kind of mock them up, make sure everything fits, see where the spacing is in order to get your belts properly aligned. Got our alternator. Now, as we said, we're upgrading to power steering. So here's our Saginaw power steering pump. That's going to bolt on right here. Kit comes with a couple of spacers. And just as an eyeball, I mean, it looks like that's going to start lining up pretty well. Also comes with all your lines, so that's nice and easy to hook up. So once we get this kind of checked out, we'll be able to pull it off in order to stick it back into the engine compartment. Now, jacking up the back's really going to help us slide this guy in a little bit. We've got some angle here on our hoist. And all right, start to come down. Slowly lower and dropper and lower and dropper. Cool. Now, if you look at the motor mount, this is pretty cool. Never seen this before. An adjustable motor mount slides back and forth, left and right. Yeah, it's a pretty you can awesome get piece. Stock ride height for the motor. You can get half inch drop. So we picked those up at CJ. It's going to be nice because our headers are in a different spot because these ports are different. Mm -hmm. We've got power steering, we've got a unique header, a lot of adjustability. Mm -hmm. 